Managing currencies in the age of uncertainty. Welcome to Currency Cast. My name is Austin McKinley. I'm the senior financial writer at Cantox. In this episode, we have the pleasure of welcoming Francois Mascalier, CEO of Simply Treasury. Mr. Mascalier is also the chair of the Luxembourg Corporate Treasury Association and of the European Association of Corporate Treasurers. Francois Mascalier, Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you here on Currency Cast. Augustine, uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on the Currency Cast today. I will try to share with you my views and how to optimize the fixed management as well as the, uh, the peer view across Europe and across uh, uh, treasurers of multinational companies. Today's episode is sponsored by Treasury Excel, the worldwide treasury community hub. So here, Francois, is my first question to you. What are your views on the um, both challenges and opportunities that 2023 might bring in terms of currency management? First, if we have a look at the, the, the recent uh, European treasury surveys, we can clearly confirm that the market risk, what I call market risk, it's uh, interest rate, uh, FX, commodities, etc. So, um, uh, remain key. Uh, it was ranking in the last uh, EACT survey, or surveys, I would say, in the third position behind cash flow forecasting and digital transformation. So, and if you look at the uh, PwC, PwC Global uh, Annual Survey, it also confirms this high position of uh, uh, the, uh, the ethics uh, uh, risk or the ethics risk management as a top priority for corporate treasurers. So it means that ethics risk remain highly ranked uh, by, by treasurers for 2023 and, and onwards. Uh, it's a top priority and, and we will certainly have an opportunity to, to discuss why. Uh, the several reasons I would say behind uh, to to rank it uh, number three, it's because first uh, the ethics uh, uh, rate, as you say, uh, rightly are highly volatile. So we saw the volatility over the, the different, let's say, last couple of months or years with COVID, war in Ukraine, etc. And so I do not foresee, although as you, I don't like to make some uh, some forecast, I do not foresee uh, a decrease in the market volatility for uh, FX currencies, interest rate, and it's quite important because of the swap points and differential of interest, and also for the commodities, and we know the weight of commodities in the uh, uh, FX, uh, FX management. So uh, I think that, uh, that that's uh, certainly a point we need to, to mention. Therefore, it, it's essential for, for CFO to protect operating margins because it's highly volatile. And so your, your operating margin could be easily uh, uh, eaten or, 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 or swallowed by, by the movement in currency. So we will remain under pressure. And, uh, um, and it's why it justified having solid, efficient edging strategies and appropriate uh, uh, edging accounting strategies and tools. So then it, it remains highly manual, this uh, management, as well as some other, by the way. And it's maybe why it remains a high focus for a lot of corporate traders. They somehow understand the problem because of the reality, but they also admit the fact that the fact they are not sufficiently uh, automate could be could be a problem. So the digital transformation is number two in terms of ranking is quite interesting because automation and digitization could be a way to uh, sort out that risk or to improve the management of the fixed risk. And cash flow forecasting, it's a top priority for a couple of years now. And I guess that for 2023, we are just launching the survey at the moment, as we speak, uh, should be and remain the top priority. And again, for the same reason, because we, we live in a world of uncertainty. So it's important to make sure that you have also accurate data, accurate for the forecast. If not, it's difficult to manage properly your fixed risk. So right. I also believe that the interest rate should remain bullish and, and I with potentially large differential of interest generating swap points. So that's the, the difficulties for corporate traders these days. At Cantos, we see that sometimes CFOs do not always understand all the, the possibilities in terms of what we call uh, optimizing forward points, that is to say, interest rate differentials. Now, uh, to illustrate that point only, now, 
you've written that, and here I'm quoting you, that often a CFO is a car driver who does not see his or her dashboard immediately, but with delay. Now, wouldn't technology and especially the availability of dashboards fed with real-time data make it easier or facilitate the communication between Treasury and the C-suite? Yeah, no, uh, it's interesting. And, and, and as I mentioned before, a point may be a concern because sometimes we have a large differential of interest, especially with exotic currencies and with this picking up interest rate in some currencies. So it may sometimes be uh, expensive to edge certain currency pairs, depending on, on which size and uh, you are in. Sometimes it could be in your favor, sometimes it could be in your disfavor. If it's in your disfavor, sometimes you can raise a question, okay, shall I edge because it's so expensive? Or what can I do to, uh, uh, to improve my position? So in such situations, some CFO decide not to edge at all and to monitor the exposure, what is feasible, but as it's highly manual, the monitoring manually of the uh, uh, open exposure could be quite difficult, quite inefficient, and uh, not really, a, 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 let's say, a recommendation or best practice. Right. So, however, the good news that there are, there are solutions uh, uh, as a currency ma management automation to, to more dynamically uh, manage your FX exposure. Uh, the forward contract could be also monitored automatically with, with machine to, to control stop losses because if you are afraid of being, uh, let's say, impacted by the swap points, the way will be to keep the position open with stop loss order and to make sure that it's automatically monitored in case of big market fluctuation within some boundaries. So I think that uh, it's a way to, uh, to, to have a, a more dynamic approach and to reduce or to mitigate the impact of, of the swap point. So the time will pass and, and of course it will reduce the impact on, on your cost. And for the second part of your question, it's also interesting because um, this conditional uh, auto uh, order automated can help enhancing efficiency because you know, uh, the machine will work 24 seven. It's quite important where you are uh, over the weekend at night and sometime when you have some days off or banking holidays, you cannot. So uh, regarding also your point on the dashboarding, it's quite important because the CFOs are always complaining they don't have access in real time to dashboard. So they would like to have a condensed, summarized uh, uh, information uh, to, to take the right decision. And for that, you need some uh, IT solution uh, because now we are in the, in the time of uh, real time treasury. And very often, uh, the tool we use, the TMSs and add-ons around TMSs, are not properly fit to produce easily and immediately some report for decision making at the C, uh, C level. Now, Francois, you've written extensively about TMS and perhaps their shortcomings when it comes to currency management. Can you guide us a little bit uh, on, on this topic? Uh, I think that uh, it's quite important to understand that uh, uh, there, are, there are some problems with uh, the current TMSs. I've underlined the, the lack and gaps of, of uh, current TMSs. And CFOs often think that if you have a TMS, a treasury management system, it can do everything around finance and treasury. In reality, uh, TMS are, are far from being able to do everything as we initially thought. So they are more and more uh, in SaaS version, very generic. It means that the functionalities and the report are standard and not really customizable. So it, it's like pret a porter solution. It's not tailor-made. And, uh, and when, it, when we talk about reporting and, and development and specific functionalities, sometimes it's missing. So it means that Trader must, must find uh, a way to uh, fulfill these gaps and find uh, the missing pieces. And usually it's on Excel spreadsheet or by adding some add-ons to, to supply the FX management. Uh, but but the execution is usually efficient with platforms and interface with TMSs for the post-trade management. Although post-trade management is not perfect with TMSs, nevertheless, the pre-trade part is never uh, properly covered. There are uh, two main treasury tasks where automation, in my view, is missing with TMSs. It's cash flow forecasting, we mentioned, and FX management. And by the way, I produced since end of last year, treasury technology 
mapping, aiming at better defining existing solution, their role, their limit, and to categorize the tools. Not all are TMSs and TMS are not able to do everything, unfortunately. So it explains why add-ons are necessary, even if you have a TMS and a, a top class or, or, or leading edge solution to, uh, to optimize your treasure management as a whole. Here at Cat Talks, we strongly believe that the importance overall of having accurate cash flow forecasts is somewhat overstated, at least when it comes to currency management. So I'd like to, um, to have your views on the importance of cash flow forecasting in general and what about in the, in the, in the case of currency management in particular? No, no, you're right. It, it, as a whole, it, it's a concern, but for FX management, especially if you have the, the approach you described, the one-to-one -one approach, where because of your business, uh, you have a risk uh, uh, appearing here and there at any moment in time, and, and potentially 24-7, especially when you have, a, uh, uh, let's say, a B2C businesses with online business. So uh, if you have such an approach, so it's more systematic. So. What about uh, the cash flow uh, accuracy? You don't care because you are just edging the uh, coming exposure. The so same with you if you have a, a layering approach or a budget approach where you try to build according to a certain pattern the, uh, the edging. So the beauty with the currency management automation and the solution that exists on the market that you can, let's say, automate that and uh, and still be efficient without necessarily having good uh, cash flow uh, uh, accuracy. And uh, that's certainly a, a, a way to approach that. So if you are not able to produce good data, try to have a strategy that makes sure that you are, let's say, edging uh, all the exposure you can uh, identify or you can estimate based on, on certain, uh, let's say, gradual approach. It's also a way to weight your uh, edging strategies and to make sure that at the end of the day, you will have a, a, a weighted average price, especially in some industry where you have a price fixed for a season or for the year. So again, uh, the two sometimes are not adapted for different strategies. If you automate the currency management system, uh, um, the FX management, you can certainly have different strategies according to your different businesses, because each business could have a different pattern, different, let's say, constraint in terms of risk. And there you can refine your, your approach and be, at the end of the day, much more efficient and, and mitigate uh, your risk and your PNL volatility. At Cantox, we're fond of saying that currency management is more than just currency risk management, and that currency risk management, in turn, is more than just the execution of a hedge, right? Now, uh, but that, that requires what it sometimes is called a holistic approach to currency management, namely one that takes the entire FX workflow, all the way from the pre-trade phase to the trade phase and the several tasks of the post-trade uh, phase. Now, consultants McKinsey have just published a book on the ecosystem uh, of the future and they argue that a multi-trillion dollar economy is at hand provided that we're able to at the company level to tear down those silos to do away with a siloed approach and you know at least when it comes of course to currency management we're very much fans of this idea to tear down those silos what's what's your view on this on this issue uh, I totally agree. So I, I, I think that, uh, and I do believe that there are many silos in many areas of treasury uh, finance. So treasury is certainly not an exception, whereas the silo uh, could uh, impact the uh, optimal uh, management of the department. So sometimes treasury department requires support uh, and data from other departments. And you mentioned the pre-trade phase. I need to know the exposure of my operation and to be informed in due course and as soon as possible to make sure that I can apply the defined strategy for edging and make sure that I can protect the margin. Because at the end of the day, the CFO, the C suite, would like to avoid any volatility and any impact on the very thin operating margin in this 
tough uh, context we are facing. So, uh, and actually the same for uh, for, for, for cash flow forecasting we, we mentioned, for working capital and for commodities. It's sometimes silo where the information and the, the flow should be more, let's say, interconnected, uh, interlinked uh, with the other finance department, so an horizontal approach, but also vertical with the subsidiary. And there we can have some uh, uh, gain by breaking the silos, by generating value, and in many cases, management uh, is silo and therefore potentially inefficient. So the communication between people and between IT tools, it's important to mitigate the risk of, uh, of inefficiencies. And so, Treasury must be the central place for managing financial risk. Not all the risk, but at least the financial risk. But for doing it rightly, it needs to be fed by data from other departments and affiliates. And that's quite important to make sure that you are uh, feeding the Treasury tools, huh, TMS or some others, uh, as soon as possible, efficiently, and if possible, not manually, to make sure that you identify the exposure and can apply the ad hoc and predefined uh, strategy. That that's really important to 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 do that. So, uh, to come back on your point of the McKinsey study, um, I can tell you how much we can leverage from further automating FX management. But but I guess it's a lot, and you have certainly opportunities to to do better. You mentioned at inception opportunities. I think that we. Have good opportunities to see and to revamp the organization, the processes, to generate more value for affiliates. And if you want, I can give you some uh, some example, but I'm sure that uh, uh, you can uh, certainly create value. For example, let's, let's take this example at least by offering to your uh, affiliates, your subsidiaries, to be able to uh, uh, invoice or be invoiced in the local currencies of your counterparty. And so by centralizing all the risk with automation, it's possible. So you have a clear view and you give an advantage because it's easier to sell or to buy in the local currency of your counterparty. That, that's a way where we cooperate. If we break uh, uh, the silos, we can certainly generate values for the affiliates. We should not be let's say in our uh, ivory tower we should also talk to the affiliate to better understand how to uh, improve and optimize the fx management risk yes absolutely here at cantos we like to uh, to view automation as a as a tool for growth right and um uh, when we say tearing down those silos we we, we make reference sometimes to the fact that the commercial teams and the finance team do not always see eye to eye and once again the the, uh, that idea of, of, of providing commercial teams with the effects rate they need in real time was, is a good example of doing away with that uh, silo uh, mentality. And by the way, uh, the same consultants there, McKinsey, said that the ones who are early adopters and drive cross-functional teamwork are the ones going to, that, that are going to reap the benefits and they even uh, cited they have the a 10% increase in, in annual revenue growth rate. Right? The multi-currency world, there's a, some, some reports here from the IMF and others arguing that, of course, the, the dollar and the euro remain important currencies, but that alongside the natural rise of CNY, of the Chinese currency, the, num uh, the, uh, the currencies of a number of smaller but well-managed managed economies are gaining ground, maybe uh, to mention a, a few of them, the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, the Singapore dollar, the, um, the Swedish crown, the Korean won, and, and others. But what we find really interesting about, about those studies, and I think it, turned, it tends to confirm our views, is that it is not only driven or, or even not mainly driven by top-down macroeconomic factors, but it's mostly corporate treasurers who are taking advantage of the benefits of buying and selling in more currencies. These are the ones. It's a microeconomic and bottom-up phenomenon leading to that multi-currency world. Perhaps a surprising result, but nonetheless, I think it's a, a reality and we're seeing it on our day-to-day -day interactions with, with customers and, uh, and prospects. What, what's your view, Francois, on that, 
multi-currency world? Do you think it's a reality? I don't, I don't think so, because the case of, of euro becoming the common currency of a large number of countries is an exception. And you know that this number is increasing recently with Croatia. So uh, I keep thinking that we will continue facing a multi-currency world, maybe less currency, but still a multi-currency world, leading by the art currencies, and you've mentioned some of them. Uh, and, and so in this multi-currency world, uh, uh, some will, re will remain or become predominant. So you mentioned uh, renminbi. Renminbi, we can anticipate the role of renminbi will increase. Euro dollar, it's, it's quite stable, I, I, I would say. So um, it's difficult to say if the uh, more exotic or smaller currencies or, or let's say what is not hard currencies will disappear. Uh, I have some doubts. Uh, of course, we will keep dealing more and more in the art currencies, but still at the end of the day for a European company, and, and you talk to, to being based in Europe, we talk to a lot of companies uh, for which the euro is the functional currency. So I keep thinking that we will remain exposed because the commodity in this world are still dealt in dollars. And uh, a lot of people predict every, week, every year is the end of the uh, US dollar domination, but, but it's still a fact. So uh, even if after COVID we can see a, a rebalancing of the uh, different leading currencies, uh, maybe the euro and maybe two good examples, I keep thinking that it will be uh, still domination of dollar. And for some, from some other currencies, uh, they will still uh, be there in the future. So we will certainly face again some uh, currency wars, so for sure. Um, but uh, okay, we will have to. Each country will try to to play on that to be to become more, let's say, competitive, having a, a, a lower currency vis-à-vis -vis the hard ones. But uh, I, I do not see that uh, it will disappear. Maybe it will be simplified, but still, we we'll have a lot of currencies to manage, and therefore, it's why it pleads, in my view, for a well-organized, automated FX management to remove this risk of impacting operating margin and whatever the future evolution could be also digital currencies, by the way, we need to, to make sure that we can, uh, let's say, minis, minimize as much as possible the p &L volatility, what uh, CFOs and CEOs would like to, uh, to completely remove. So difficult to answer your uh, macro question. At least the euro was uh, a success, despite uh, a lot of detractors claiming uh, uh, every every year that uh, it's not viable currency. I'm not convinced that uh, uh, it will change in the coming year because I do not see where we can find such a zone deciding to to have uh, one common uh, uh, currency. So uh, again, difficult to say. We'll see, but I keep thinking that the world will be multi-currency with art and uh, let's say more exotic or smaller currencies and then it would be quite important to manage properly that to make sure that you 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 extract the best and protect your company against this risk that's right we always say um use the the most profitable currencies all the time francois mascalier thank you so much for joining us here at um in currency cast and well I hope you, uh, to see you soon uh, next time. Thank you for welcoming me and, and thanks uh, for, for this invitation. Very interesting. All right. See you. Goodbye.